Good morning. I'm Evangeline Bravo Manharis, representing the Silliman University Alumni Council of North America and a member of the Silliman University Board of Trustees. It is wonderful to see you all on this blessed Sunday worship service. On behalf of our dynamic and energetic chair of the Board of Trustees, Balbido Jr., and our esteemed members of the Board of Trustees, this is a moment of extreme pleasure that I welcome each one of you physically present and those online globally to this beautiful space for one of our oldest university traditions, our 122nd Silliman University Founders Day. Our calendar this month is filled with many formal and informal events. Alumni return in droves for reunions as part of the celebration. We come together and renew the bonds of university life that connect us to one another and to the many Silimanians who have come before. This month is one such celebration. As the name suggests, we are here to commemorate the founding visionaries of this university to honor those who stepped in to open Silliman. Their investments turned their significant resources to this part of the world. Through the years, their initial investment was renewed by countless alumni, faculty, students, staff, and friends of the university who have themselves endowed the promise of this place. We know firsthand just how great the return has been. Their generosity literally built this campus. And everything we do here, every discovery made, every class taught by a distinguished faculty member, and every life that is saved is a direct result of their original investment. Let us all join today to honor our founders and celebrate the coming of another year in Silliman's remarkable history with gratitude and look ahead with renewed purpose. Again, welcome. May God bless Silliman and each one of us. Happy Founders Day. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome everyone to this momentous occasion as we celebrate our 122nd Founders Day. Today we honor the visionary pioneers who laid the foundation for this, our beloved academic community. The Founders legacy of faith perseverance, and dedication continues to inspire us all. Let's come together now in gratitude to their contributions and in unity as we carry out their mission forward. Thank you all for joining us in this Sunday service despite your hectic schedule in the past several days, and also to join us to commemorate this important day of remembrance and reflection. Happy Founders Day to one and all.
Welcome to Seliman University Church as we celebrate Seliman University's 122nd year of God's faithfulness and willing to embrace the future as God's gift. We welcome especially our alumni who are here to celebrate with the whole university. We come together with gladdened hearts by this time of celebration. Its activities, the singing, the programs, the parade, the reunions, and most especially, the message that you are the God who empowers us. We have a God who empowers us. Let the music that we hear and the message give more meaning in our celebration. And as we share our sacred stories, feel the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit within and among us. Enjoy the moment and let the living God touch and inspire us as we find new ways to minister to each other. Because God is faithful, may we embrace the future as God's gift. We welcome especially the visiting alumni and guests who are with us today. Uh, may I request them to please stand to be recognized. Alumni and visiting guests. Thank you and welcome. Look around, look around and you will see some friends. Thank you. And I think I saw some members of the board of trustees. May I request you to please stand to be recognized? Oh. Our thanks to the Seliman University High School 1973 for their floral offering and for sponsoring for snacks for the fellowship time. You are all invited for snacks and to exchange stories after our worship. Hopefully the rain won't come. They also donated two communion sets made by a ceramicist who is a member of their bats. If you know, if you look at this. And this is to celebrate their 50th anniversary since graduation. Our thanks also to the Bachelor BSN 1973 for the floral offering on their 50th year of celebration. The ushers are also members of the 50th of the of the 50th class. A golden, celebrating golden anniversary. Our thanks to our liturgists who are members of their batch. Alex Del Amor and Alice Fe Mercado. Thank you. To the ushers who are members of the Issue High School 1973, again, thank you very much. Our thanks to the Covenant Choir, directed by Dr. Elizabeth Susan Vista Suarez for the anthem this morning. To our organist, Professor Isabel de Maya Vista and pianist, Ms. Allen Diadem Kessid Hoveta. For the life and work of the Church of Seliman University, you can look at the Paris News. And we have some pictures there that will more or less show us, show you the ministry that we are doing here at Seliman. You also will find the schedule of activities for the Founders Day. This afternoon is the Parada, and tomorrow at five in the morning is our sunrise service. Please check the other schedule. Let us continue our worship and let the Holy Spirit touch our hearts and minds so we can feel the presence of God in our midst. Good morning. It's an honor to introduce to you our distinguished speaker for today's Founders Day celebration. Our speaker is musically talented, a passionate educator, and a lifelong learner. She's a native of Surigao City, 
and earned her primary education at Surigao City Pilot School, then proceeded to Surigao Norte National High School for her secondary education. She arrived in Dumaguete to enroll at Silliman University with a Bachelor of Elementary Education, major in early childhood, and graduated cum laude. After that, our speaker attended graduate school with a Master of Divinity in Liturgy and Music at the Silliman University Divinity School. She pursued her Doctor of Education at the University of Southern Philippines Foundation, Lahug, Cebu City. Her passion and dedication to higher learning continue as she is taking a Master of Arts in Education with specialization in curriculum and instruction at the Philippine Normal University, Manila, through LESCOP or Linking Standards Quality Program, a scholarship program in partnership with the Department of Education. Despite her ongoing schooling, our speaker spends much of her expertise and time enhancing the educational program, particularly in Surigao City, as the current Assistant Schools Division Superintendent. Before attaining her present position, she worked her way up from a classroom teacher, head teacher, principal, division coordinator, and education program supervisor in Surigao City from 2001 to 2017. Dr. Laila also emphasizes preserving and promoting local culture and music, as she is a writer of the Surigaonan Music and Arts Learners material for grade one and grade three, and the MTV MLE Learners material for grade three. She is also a co-writer of Surigaonan Learners material, Dep Ed Cariton Classroom, and a co-writer of Surigaonan Orthography. With all her responsibilities and achievements, our speaker maintains her humility and service anchored to her faith in God. She is married to Carl Dennis Denake and blessed with three children, and two are already studying here at Silliman University, Andre, third year student, medtech student, and also Carl Lawrence, a grade 11 student, while the youngest, Carlisle is a grade seven still in Surigao City. Brothers and sisters in Christ, my fellow alumni, help me welcome our distinguished guest preacher for today's 122nd Silliman University founding anniversary, Dr. Laila Fuertes Denake. Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invites all of us to be a part of the beloved community. God invites all of you to share the good news. We are welcome just as we are. We are loved just as we are. In gratitude, let us worship God. Please stand up for our hymn of praise.
let us pray. Holy One, you have led us to celebrate another year of blissful service. We have overcome difficult seasons and endured trials, and in times of loss, we feel an inner joy, for we feel your compassion and love. You have carried this university through the years and shielded it from the storms. Today, we give you thanks and praise for your faithfulness, and we embrace our future as your precious gift. Give us the spirit of joy as we celebrate 122 years of ministry of molding young lives. We give you the highest honor and praise. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In worship, we come near to God, and He will come near to us, calling us to experience His love that heals and restores. We have not been faithful servants of the, of the Word and failed to honor God's command. Let us lift to God our iniquities, our burdens, and our sins, so we can be made whole. Let us pray. Merciful God, sin separates us from your divine love, but your faithfulness calls us to come and ask for healing and pardon. We pray for restoration in our relationships. Purify our hearts to see your path, leading us towards the future you promised. Grant us the spirit of obedience to serve you in ways you have blessed us with gifts and talents. Strengthen us, for we are weak and easily burdened with much care. Help us to know your peace amid the challenges we face. Help us, Lord, become better servants so we can pass on the light of Christ to future generations. Strengthen us to walk in the way of truth and live according to your divine purpose. Change our hearts, O oh God. Amen. Here is an assurance of pardon. God said, you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your iniquities. I, even I am, he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Glory to God in the highest. Let us now pray. Forgiven and restored, we praise the holy name of God, our creator, provider, and protector. With grateful hearts, we lay before you our accomplishments as we bow down asking for blessings for the things we seek to receive, desire to do, and be transformed in our lives. We fully embrace the future, a gift we look forward to with hope and assurance. Lord, you are faithful and true. 
It's been 122 years of your faithfulness, and many are touched and lives transformed, becoming your instruments to others. We stand as witnesses to those who have offered their lives to serve in this university, a service anchored in Jesus our Lord. Rekindle the fire of servanthood as we carry with gratitude as ambassadors of your grace, sharing and living as witnesses of the gospel to places we are called to serve. Open our intellect to the wonders of new possibilities according to your divine plan. Let the fire of your love bind us all together in service. Your mercy and grace strengthen the band of our fellowship as one body in Christ. So we pray, Lord, for this congregation gathered in this sanctuary and in cyberspace, offering their prayer of thanksgiving and supplication. With warm hearts, we welcome back alumni, the reunion in batches as they reconnect with their academic roots and faith foundation. Thank you for the fruits of honor they bring to their alma mater, a pride we can only lift to you in praise. Bless the efforts labored to maintain the rich heritage of Christian education. Bless this university led by the administration. Continue to inspire and bless them with wisdom and faith needed to endure the challenges accorded to their roles and positions. Lord, we lift to you the prayers of your people, especially those who need healing, those who surrender their future in your hands. Touch them, and with your compassion and hope be sustained. This is our heritage, O God, in all the festivities of homecoming celebrations, maintaining the connection and deepening the roots of faith. Lord, we pray for your church, for you have given us the spirit of courage, truth, and service. We lift in your name the prayers of your people. Unite us under your leadership, Lord. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. reverence to the reading of God's Word, may I request those who are able to please stand. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 10 to 15 and 20 to 25. Let us read responsively. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give you a land with fine large cities that you did not build. Houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you have eaten your fill, Take care you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The Lord your God you shall fear, him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. 
Do not follow other gods, any of the gods of the people who are all around you. Because the Lord your God, who is present with you, is a jealous God. The anger of the Lord your God would be kindled against you, and he would destroy you from the face of the earth. When the children ask you in time to come, what is the meaning of these decrees and the statutes and the ordinances the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your children, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. The Lord displayed our eyes great and awesome signs and wonders against Egypt, against the Pharaoh, and against all his household. He brought us out from there in order to bring us in, to give us the land that he promised an oath to our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to observe all the statutes, to fear the Lord our God with our lasting good, so as to keep us alive, and as is now the case. If we diligently observe this entire commandment before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, we will be in the right. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. me with your power 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Before anything else, I would like to express my gratitude to God Almighty for this moment to be with you today. Also, I would like to thank Silliman University and Silliman Church for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to share God's Word this Founders Day Sunday. Embracing the future as God's gift is both a challenge to respond to and a call to celebrate God's faithfulness. Our biblical reference this morning is part of a narrative that tells us of the admonition that Moses gave to the Israelites as they were about to enter the promised land, specifically as they were about to invade Jericho. In verse 10 to 15, Moses admonished the Israelites to be diligent and to continue to be grateful to God for who he is and for what he has done for them. Verse 12 says, Be diligent lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is the Lord your God you shall fear. In these verses, we read that God was about to fulfill his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God has not forgotten about his promise that he will bring Israel into the land that is flowing with milk and honey, a land that was already developed and productive. That's why Moses reminded the Israelites to be careful because they might forget God. Among the Israelites, it was a duty and a responsibility of the parents to tell their children about the redemptive work that God has done for them. The parents were to tell their children about the ways of the Lord. In verse 20 to 25, Moses admonished the Israelites that they should tell their children if their children would ask them about the meaning of the testimonies, the statutes, and the rules that the Lord their God has commanded them. They were to tell their children about the ways of the Lord. For about 400 years, the Israelites were slaves under Pharaoh, and God saved them with great power and might because of his love for them. It was love that moved God to save his people from the bondage of slavery. That's why it was imperative for their parents to tell their children of the ways of God and about all the signs and wonders that God did when he delivered them from Egypt and sustained them in the wilderness. It was the parents' responsibility to tell their children. What does our text tell us today? First, allow me to share three points. First, we are admonished to remember God with gratitude. When the Israelites were to conquer the promised land, they were to occupy houses they did not build, harvest crops they did not plant, and enjoy vineyards they did not till. When their life becomes easy in the promised land, they might forget God. That's why Moses had to remind them to be extra careful when they occupy the promised land, lest they forget the Lord. When life is happy, secure, and safe, when we are satisfied, contented, and are comfortable, 
it is very easy to put God aside and make him a second and even last priority. Today, we are reminded to always seek him first and make him our top priority. God makes all things possible for us. He strengthens us. He sustains us. He protects us, guides us. He never fails to meet our every need. He comforts us in our pain, consoles us in our sorrow, and embraces us in our brokenness. He gives us life saves us from all our iniquities, and reconciles, reconciles us to himself. Let us therefore remember him with gratitude. Second, today we are admonished to revere the Lord our God and God alone. I have a few questions. Allow me to ask. What are our priorities? Are we clear with our priorities in life? And if we are, what is our top priority? Why do we live and work so hard? Why do we aspire to graduate, get a high-paying job, and get promoted. Why? What troubles are we getting ourselves into? And why? The other question would be, do we know our priorities at all? And do we know why we live and work so hard? Do we know why? Are we clear with our reasons? I ask those questions because our answers to them greatly determine our direction, our decisions, our plans, our goals, and our actions. Our answers even determine the kind of people we associate ourselves with and the kind of relationships we get into. Verse 13 to 15 say, Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods and the gods of the people around you. For the Lord your God in your midst is a jealous God lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you and he destroy you from off the face of the earth. Today, we are admonished to praise and worship and live for God alone, not because we are afraid of God's wrath and punishment, but because we love him. We worship and we serve the Lord not because it is our obligation to do so, but because it is our response to the undying love of God for everyone. We are God's chosen people. We did not choose Him, but He chose us. We did not love Him. He loved us first. Therefore, it is but fitting that we give our all to Him. He is our God Almighty, the great I Am, our Deliverer, our Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. He is our Healer, our Provider, our refuge, our shield, our light, our shepherd. God is our King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, our everlasting Father. That is who God is. 
And that is who He should be in our lives. Let us therefore revere Him and make Him our top priority all our days. Third, we are admonished to tell our story. The beautiful and not so beautiful stories of our lives. The stories of survival, stories of success, stories of defeat perhaps. We all have different and unique stories to tell. And the most beautiful of them all is the story of God's love for you and me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 to become effective storytellers and credible witnesses to God's redeeming love, we must live our stories and experience God's love firsthand so that when others ask about it, we can tell and retell it with passion, with conviction, and with credibility. Not through the stories of other people, but through our very own life stories. When others ask us about our stories, what story do we have to tell? In summary, as we embrace the future as a gift from God, first, let us remember with gratitude God's faithfulness through the ages. He remains faithful even when we do not. God is the same yesterday, today, and in the days to come. God never, let me emphasize that, God never changes. Second, let us always remember to revere God for who He is and for what He has done for us. How He delivered us from the bondage of our sins and be reconciled to Him. And let us remember who He is. He is our God Almighty, the great I Am, our Deliverer, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. And third, when our children and other people ask us about the story of how God loved us, let us not hesitate to tell them of the most beautiful story of how God gave himself through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, for us to become sin for us all. And to become the sacrificial lamb for the forgiveness of our sins. So that we can all be saved and be rec reconciled to him and have eternal life. In closing, today marks the 122nd year of the founding of Silliman University, our dear alma mater. The future that our founders courageously embraced 122 years ago is where we are right now. Today was that future that they embraced. Let us remember them with gratitude in our hearts. Let us honor the sacrifice they made so that our future will become a beautiful reality. Let us tell our children and other people of the story of God's love and faithfulness. Just as the founders of Silliman University embraced the future as God's gift, not for themselves, but for others, let us embrace the future as God's gift, not for ourselves, but for the generations yet to come. And we are assured of God's promise that He will be with us 
until the end of days. God bless everyone and happy Founders Day. Daily, we face the threat of not having enough. Yet God has so often showed us that His grace is sufficient for us. His faithfulness endures forever. In thanksgiving, let us present our offerings, tithes, and pledges to God.
receive these gifts that we bring before you, O God. Receive our thanksgiving and grant us continued passion for bringing the light of Christ and the gospel of peace to the ends of the earth. Bless each of us as we continue to do the ministry in your name. Amen. Before we sing our last hymn, we will say our appreciation to Dr. Danaki. Please be seated. May I request Dr. Danaki to please be with us. President of the Makan. Seliman University and Seliman University Church present this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Laila F. Danaki for her inspiring message as guest preacher during the 122nd Seliman University Founders Day Sunday service on August 27, 2023, with the theme, Embracing the Future as God's Gift. Given this 27th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2023, at the Silliman University Church, Dumaguete City, Philippines. Signed, Reverend Pia, Dr. Earl Jude Cleope, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Dr. Barry McCann. President Seliman University. Please rise for our closing hymn.
us pray. O Lord, our God, as we relish the beauty and serenity of this new day, seeing smiling old familiar faces in a gathering like this, we are united in raising our voices in praise and thanksgiving for your goodness, for your greatness, and for your great love. For today, O Lord, we mark that historic moment when the pioneers of Siliman began the formidable task of putting up a school initially for boys and with just a handful of students. It was just a very humble beginning, O Lord, and yet, like the tiny mustard seed, you made this institution grow by leaps and bounds through the dedicated efforts and sacrifices of so many of its pioneering leaders, faculty, administrators, staff, and students. You made it grow, O oh Lord, in spite and despite the various changes and challenges the university had to face through the years. O oh God, you have been so good, so gracious and so loving in the way you have blessed our dear Suleiman, especially as we now look at the kind of achievements she was able to accomplish through the years. Indeed, these are manifestations of your faithfulness to us, O oh God. Thank you for the blessing of Christian education, the faith and truth that we have received and which by now have become the source of our guiding star in living our own individual lives as Silimanians wherever we are. May this be a moment, O Lord, of meaningful rejuvenation of the spirit, a renewal of conviction, a recommitment of ourselves to our higher calling as Christians, and a rekindling of our faith that is to be geared towards a life of continuing service and witness to your truth, to your love, and to your salvation. Thank you, dear God, for meeting us this morning through the prayers, the songs, the readings and proclamation of word, and even the silent prayers and meditations of our heart. May our encounter with you today, O oh God, inspire us to never forget the things you have done for us all. Encourage us to enjoy the present moment and live our lives declaring your Lordship as we share this to one another and to anticipate and embrace the future as your gift for us all. Bless our homes and every family represented here, dear Lord, our loved ones near and far, friends and alumni, especially those who did not make it today. And even those who are worshiping with us in celebrating this founding anniversary, virtually and over radio. Bless everyone, dear Lord, and even your children who are personally lifting their concerns to you, standing before you, concerns of health, guidance, enlightenment, and discernment, expressing their gratitude and thanksgiving, laying down before you their petitions and longings in their lives, May you listen to their pleas, O God, and examine the desires of their heart. Sanctify their appeals, and may all be known before you as we join them in their prayers. This is our prayer that we offer to you together with the prayers of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as we continue with our celebration, let us remember that today is the future that our founders courageously embraced 122 years ago. As we go out from this sanctuary, let us continue telling and living the story of God's love and faithfulness to our dear Silliman University. Let us enjoy this present time and be mindful that whatever we do today will be the future of our generations to come. So we go from this sacred place, led by the way of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the truth of his gospel and to live the life that he has given us all. We live Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, now and always. Amen. 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the 
Jesus in the darkness, oh. 